Hello, Cancer. Sun, moon, rising, and Venus signs. Welcome to your tarot reading slash astrology talk here at the Intuitive Teacup. I'm, uh, I'm mixing it up this week. We're doing it a little bit differently. So uh, if you're here for it, awesome. If not, maybe I'll see you next time. We are going to do tarot, but we're also going to throw in some more astrology than usual. I just kind of feel guided to do that this week. There's a lot going on. It's a, bang a banger week, as they say. <laughs> so uh, it's the beginning of Taurus season, uh, starting around Friday, April 20th. So there is going to be, actually, I got to do my spiel first. I'm ready to like hop in real quick. Let's set the intention to get my can cancers out there. Cancer, sun, moon, rising, and Venus signs, particularly guys, your rising sign. Please do a quick Google search, find out what your rising sign is and watch that video. It, it will likely speak to you more. That being said, anyone is welcome into this reading. If you have placements in cancer, there might be something here for you. I hope there is. Um, let's set the intention to get my cancer gang out there. Some uh, clear, helpful, and insightful messages wherever they are currently at on their spiritual path. Uh, these are general messages, guys. This is by no means um, an astrological report. I, I want to sprinkle some stuff in, but again, be open-minded. If it's your story, great. Take it and run with it. If it's not, please release it. It might be going out to someone else. You're accountable and responsible for all your own actions and decisions. Um, but let's do this. Let's do this. Okay. Um... Yes, Taurus season. So as the sun moves into Taurus, uh, it has been highlighting wherever the sun moves, there's potential for growth and I would say even reinvention maybe with the sun and an area being highlighted. For, for my Cancer rising specifically um, and symbolically for Cancers, it's been in Aries, right, for the last month or so. Um, and that has put a, a huge focus on your status in the world, um, possibly your reputation in some capacity who you are, and especially in terms of work and career, uh, kind of in, in the long term, um, there could have been some back and forth going, going on with, you know, your personal life, your public life, you know, who you are privately in the house and the home versus how you present yourself in the world. Um, the sun will be moving into Taurus, so there's going to be more focus on long-term careers and goals, um, how you collaborate in terms of communities and groups of people, not just on the individual level, um, and also more focus on your friends, enjoying friendships and connections. Um, in that same section, we are going to jump into the tarot. Um, it comes out when it's supposed to. That's, that's sort of what I've gotten from this. <laughs> From that, there is a huge astrological aspect, there we go, going on in the sky, yeah, that's going to offer you something sweet. It's going to offer you something real sweet, Cancer. So, you might not be feeling sweet right now. You might be feeling wounded. You might be feeling bitter. You might be feeling like someone owes you an apology. You yourself might be feeling remorseful or feeling like you could have shown up better. Um, very likely shown up better for yourself. Some of you have been taking it um, and not in a good way. And I think you're starting to realize a need for our reinvention on offers that you accept. And I think with, uh, with the Page of Cups, it's almost like someone views you as very juvenile. Someone views you as childlike or innocent or inexperienced or just not worthy in, in some capacity of the the respect and value that you know you intuitively have, but I think this feels very much like you make yourself small as not to, uh, for some of you, it's like as not to intimidate other people, but I also think it has to do with fear of judgment. And if I come in with my Aries energy, which can be a little bit brash and prickly, well, what, what do I risk doing that, right? You know, if you fear rejection, which I, the more I read for cancer, that's such a strong message that comes through because you're assigned so connected to the clan and the family and the people and the, the home, right? You know, f <laughs> friends are the family you choose, but even out in the world, it's like, well, I don't want to be rejected by these people or those people. And so I feel like for some of my cancers, again, this is not across the board, but there is a message here of showing up in the world and not wanting to take up too much space and re-examining that and how that has impacted your money but also i think it's almost like you're reassessing and rebalancing how that is operating from a place of what you tell yourself and how you feel about yourself in terms of what you bring to the table <clears throat> There could be an offer that has to do with renegotiations, um, particularly in your career. And I'll say that because Mercury is retrograding there. So Mercury is all about the RE, the reassociation, the recreation, the revisitation, the reorganization, the restructuring, the all the re's. Like you got to redo it essentially, right? 
for you, that's been happening again in that house of career status, reputation, um, how you how you are viewed out in the world. And there might be some changes in terms of the relationship dynamics there. Um, and, and maybe you haven't reached a conclusion on something. Maybe that is coming. But, and I, I don't mean to dishearten anybody out there, it could be that the offer that comes, it's something, it's something, but I actually think it is not going to meet your expectations or your standards. I think five years ago it would have. I think, you know, 15 years ago, 10 years ago, you would have been like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. But you would have been feeling some type of way on the inside. There's something coming through here where it's like, it's a fish, like it's a fish in my cup. What do you want me to do with this? <laughs> um, I wanna get one more on that. <clears throat> I think you've outgrown this, I think. And there's, I'm not saying like, <laughs> there's, there's so much coming through here. Like I don't even, I can't even, like I need the universe to slow down on the messages, but there's something coming through here where you've outgrown this. Or, or the way you've been behaving in a relationship, you've outgrown. And I'm hearing the word surpassed. I think it has to do with like surpassing your own expectations of what you were worthy of receiving from this. And I think you are busting out. So this is a Jupiter card, right? So let's talk about it. Let's talk about uh, the Jupiter Uranus conjunction, which again is happening in the sign of Taurus. Uh, 11th house stuff for my Cancerians, long-term goals, the future, communities, friendships. Um, and, and it, you know, Jupiter loves being in that house. Jupiter is very much associated with money, education, growth, religion, spirituality, you know, le uh, law, legal things, right? Um, with Uranus, it's like, all bets are off. There's something, I, I almost think there's something sort of magical about what's coming through here. Um, we're leaning more into your desire to not accept pennies or to not accept minimal offers, minimal effort being put into some relationship dynamic. Again, think outside the box. It doesn't just have to be 11th house friendships. It's any, any sort of partnership, really. Um, your ability to be like, you're breadcrumbing me. I deserve more. The universe is like, oh shit, cancer just got the upgrade. <laughs> like, I think the universe delivers something to you that is is more in alignment with who you are becoming. And um, because really it has to do with the work you've been doing on yourself um, and how essentially you inform other people of your value and, and how to treat you. Um, and this is a situation where maybe there isn't a lot of bad blood, though Though I would question that because, you know, the, the eclipses that we're having are very much closely connected to Chiron, which is the wounded warrior. It's that that thing, that, that uh, crippling thing we have in our life that is sometimes driving the bus and things that we can't necessarily escape or, or get past and it feels like a part of us will always be broken. Now, that, that seems very much like, ugh, that's awful energy. That's just what Chiron is. You, again, you can Google it. You can research Chiron. But because it's the wounded warrior, and I think I've said this. I've said it to multiple signs. I may have said it to you. There's also something kind of magical about that, too, where your own faults or your own handicaps, for lack of a better term, in some ways show up in the world as your superpower um, and, and do, in some ways impact your well they absolutely impact your manifestations but it's almost like viewing it as glass half empty versus glass half full it's something it's made you a stronger person it's made you more aware of that thing that didn't come easy to you that other people take for granted and again like being super blunt and transparent chiron is not the thing where magically it gets transformed overnight and we feel good and we've saved ourselves and we've rescued ourselves and we're elated because we conquered that demon chiron is that thing that's like we have to learn the acceptance of something that is challenging but also to not make it a monster to choose to work with it and to choose to collaborate with the part of ourselves that feels less than and you do that by offering yourself support and compassion anyway there does seem to be renegotiations again likely of of work contracts or for some of you it's even coming through as like health contracts which i get because this is you know jupiter rules your your sixth house of daily routines your regimen also your health and your wellness so for some of you like there, there could even be something with like medical stuff going on or insurance stuff or or health stuff first for some of you I do like the Wheel of Fortune here, and I think it's directing me to bring about sort of like the importance of what this conjunction is going to bring um, to my Cancerians. And wow, 
Oh, wow. This is you falling in love with a new energy in your life. Um, and yes, for, for a lot of you, it may have to do with a person, but I'm going to, I'm going to phrase it as this. And I think this is very important by all means, get excited about this, but do not marry yourself to the idea that this is a very specific person that you have in mind, because I think there's something very unexpected about Uranus. Well, there is undeniably, this is you falling in love with an opportunity that seems to present out of nowhere. But again, I'm going to reiterate what I've said in past videos. You've earned this. You've shown up for yourself. And that is what is, um, I wanted to use the word breeding, new results in the partnerships, platonic, romantic, sexual, friendship, whatever it is. In the partnerships you're attracting, it is a reflection of how you are shining your light. Um, and yeah, it's like, this feels like learning to work with that Chiron, something that you viewed as a handicap. I keep wanting to reference this phrase too, of like sort of the benefit sometimes of wearing the rose tinted glasses where it's very easy to dive into the woe is me, pity, like everything is hard for me. It's always a struggle or a challenge. I'm not saying that you're not right and that there isn't value in recognizing where things could be better. But I think if we sink too deeply into that, we miss out on the opportunities of off, like offers and opportunities that could actually like, I'm hearing like double down on that, that could actually be really beneficial if we could choose to see things as glass half full, even when they're not feeling that way. You know, Jupiter, it, it has a lot to do with faith in the future, even when, even during times of struggle, struggle and challenge, it's all the more important to know that like, this is temporary. Like the five says you're in the thick of the narrative now, but this is by no means where it ends. Like this, this is like, you have no choice but to show up. And for some of yourself, I said, I said the same thing to Aries. Maybe it's not working harder. Maybe it's pulling back a little bit to honor and respect yourself because you do have two very strong cards of Taurus. And to me, this, this can sometimes be a health crisis card. And I don't do fear-based readings. Like most of you know, that's not what this is about. But like this is hardship, whether it has to do with a relationship in your life where communication has sucked. The communication between these two is not happening. It's not jiving. Um, it can have to do with financial hardship, money worries, um, feeling left out in the cold, feeling abandoned, you know, relationship is issues. Um, what was the third thing what I was going to say? It's impacting your relationships, though. It takes two to tango. There's two people in this card. If these people were to communicate in a new way um, or in a way where they open themselves up to see a different possibility or potential, again, glass half full, because here it's like we're both <laughs> I wanted to say something inappropriate. It's like, we are both really thirsty. We are both dehydrated and like, we don't know what to do. And like, we're so in it. We can't see the forest from the trees. Like, hey, like, you know, this is a stained glass window. There's a church here. There's salvation. There's refuge from the storm. If we only had the ability to like, take off our, our blinders and see like, there's actually an opportunity presenting here. Um, but, but because we're so in, in our own, lost in our own woes and misery, we're not necessarily seeing the signs because we're not operating at a place where our intuition is driving the bus. We're letting fear take over essentially, right? Uh, and this may have to do with Mercury retrograde too. It is a Mercury card. So something about communication contracts and, and partnership is coming through that it's been put through the ringer. That being said, I think a lot of you, you're coming out on top whether you realize it or not. And maybe it's like trying to hold on to something. Maybe that's not serving you. And I don't know if it has to do with trying to save something or be the rescuer or be like, no, 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 I committed myself to this. And like, I'm a, <laughs> like, I'm a stand up guy. I'm a stand up girl. I'm not going to let go of this. But it, it's like, at what point is holding on to this actually doing more damage and more harm than good when maybe sort of that simply releasing or if it's not releasing a pulling back, a reevaluation of, of the energy and the time spent on this connection, maybe the pulling back actually was the answer the whole time. And either, you know, possibly maybe something is fixed and you it's funny i'm wanting to use the word you fall in love again but as i'm saying that the universe is like this is business though this is like this isn't necessarily like romantic sexual and it and it can be cancer but it's like you fall in love with your your job again or you fall in love with that friendship that has been a steady and a constant in your life 
But there had to be like a letting go to give more breathing room. I'm literally wanting to like keep doing that. Like they're releasing. It's like your hands are bloodied and bruised trying to hold on to this rope, like holding on for dear life. It's like if you release, something changes. It's like, the, I don't know why I'm getting this, but it's like the rope moves a few inches and then it's like you have a better grip on it. But it's it's like learning to release is actually what's serving you better. And that feels like what Jupiter is. Saturn is that like constrictive, um, like it's just, ooh, it's it's brutal. It's brittle. It's, it's harsh. Jupiter is like that, ah, exhale, release. Everything is good here. I do think there's new partnership coming into your life. And just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not existing. This is saying you need to have faith. And I mean, you're extremely intuitive. So it's like you, you know something is in the pipeline, but you're just questioning. I think there's the fear of like, what's going to happen if I let go? That, that's definitely coming through a little bit. Um, let's see. So as the sun moves into Taurus, um, it is going to be squared. <laughs> it is going to be challenged um by pluto which is in your eighth house of joint financial partnerships and resources it also has to do with your mental health and wellness it's a scorpio ruled house right so for you aquarius is in that place but again there is a theme between the taurus stuff going on and the aquarius stuff in your eighth house of like partnerships communities and and showing up in in a way where you're not just an individual you're part of something greater but that might be going through a bit of a rehaul and and a reinvention and i mean Pluto takes everything away so that it can be built properly. And again, that's not a message that is meant to incite fear. That's just that's just what it does. And I mean, you know, the sun, the sun essentially squares Pluto all the time. But that is happening on, let's see, Sunday, the 21st um, ish ish. Um, and so there is sort of this challenge, this dynamic of where, you know, the sun is highlighting things in Taurus. Um, <laughs> and again, like the Taurus Scorpio stuff too is speaking with like, you know, 11th house, Pluto, resources and joint finances. There's, there's a challenge there. It feels like there might be a disagreement. And I think you just have to be very blunt in, in terms of what you're thinking and what you're needing at this point. You have no reason to hold back and you can do it in a tactful, diplomatic way, but I don't think you need to cushion it with sweetness. With the King of Swords, again, it's a Saturn ruled card. So like the idea of like a, a not constru constructive, yes, but I'm almost hearing constrictive conversation. It does kind of feel like an uncomfortable conversation, but that's no reason to run from it because otherwise you're not going to get anywhere. This could be a conversation that illuminates an undeniable truth, but you've been holding back on it because it's like, you know, it's going to cause some waves. And do keep in mind, this could go vice versa. This could be someone uh, approaching you with something that kind of is like, I don't know, with the tower, sometimes it feels unexpected, but ultimately the tower is like, it liberates us from the devil, right? Like nu numerically, it comes after the devil, which is that Saturn stuff, but it's like the unhealthy Saturn. It's like, we're not growing, you know, we're living in a state of fear, we're addicted to something, we're obsessed with something, and it's, the universe ultimately has decided, you know, again, Jupiter, Saturn stuff, we have to, we have to move away from that. We have to grow, we have to expand as a person. And so when the tower comes through, similar to Pluto, it has this liberating energy, but in it's a way where it does sometimes feel like a, a punch to the gut or a punch to the stomach or however you want to say it. But again, I, there, there's something to do with faith that what you're grasping for and holding on for for dear life. I know you're not ready to hear this, but it's like maybe you never needed that where. And I think it's important to ask, like, where was that coming from? And for a lot of you. It, I don't know why I wanted to say it's like you you felt like you had to make yourself small, like your voice wasn't worthy of people's time or your opinions weren't worth sharing. Um, and for some of you, it, it, it was wasted expression, not because you shouldn't have expressed it. It's that you were expressing it to a person where they they were too dumb to see. So I think some of you made that mistake of withdrawing or pulling back shining your light your authentic light or sharing your voice because it was met with harsh energy or criticism or someone who didn't bounce the ball back and and i want to say like play with you in, in terms of like this hey yeah let's talk about this or yeah cool like what about this um instead of constructive criticism it was just simply met with criticism and i think for a lot of you years ago you took that as a oh okay like 
my voice isn't worthy. Like I'll just again, like this isn't for everyone, but it's like I'll make myself small to to meet the needs and standards of other people. No, no, you're not doing that anymore. And then you start finding connections that actually do respect you, where you don't have to make yourself small. You meet people who actually sort of support you and and bring you a sense of feeling valued and and respected. You know, whatever, asking your opinion or, or whatever it is, whatever it is. And that's what this King of Swords feel like, feels like. It, it does speak to me about some sort of shocking truth or a conversation that completely changes the game. And maybe for some of you, like, you know, again, glass half full. I do think this is happening in terms of career stuff because there, there's a lot of aspects kind of indicating that to me. But I also think, too, this might be happening in terms of, uh, you know, potentially love and romance. You know, the ruler of this... this uh, Taurus Uranus conjunction. It is happening in Venus, you know, uh, meeting someone out in the world um, <laughs> with the Wheel of Fortune, <clears throat> and and maybe there's an expressions of hidden feelings that I don't know if it blows you out of the water in a good way or yeah, but there's fear regarding a conversation. So maybe it has to do with someone approaching you because they didn't feel worthy. That that's the irony here. It's like there's there's such a mirroring of like. In some relationships where you've been showing up and and not feeling worthy and or I feel like I'm not phrasing it correctly, but acting small, it's because you are questioning yourself. But ironically, like I almost get this is in a different connection. There's someone who kind of is very intimidated by you and there's fear of addressing you. Maybe it's because fear of rejection or or fear, yeah, I think it's fear of rejection or fear of blocking or up, upsetting the scale, upsetting your life. And I mean, for some of you, maybe you're exiting, yeah, I mean, this message has already come through, web, no matter who it is, you know, business, romantic, friendship, whatever. The fear of rocking the boat or tipping the scales when really that liberation is so desperately needed. It's like fearing the consequence of some sort of action that we're not taking when participating in that storyline or that scenario is actually a greater con uh, consequence in the long term because of what we're having to sacrifice. Ooh, that felt important. That felt really big. Um, and, and again, it has to do with the perspective, you know, fear of the unknown. What if the unknown is so much better? So keeping ourselves small or staying in this box or in this relationship is actually doing more damage than good. It's actually like a detriment. It's it's like a, a weight that we're not realizing because we got so used to carrying it. We didn't realize there could be any other way. I do think there's something about sort of like psychic downloads and, and feeling the stirrings of something going on, but not having the full vision or the full picture here. I do think there, there, yeah, I totally see this. There is, there's a, there's a, a, sorry, I'm hearing myself going, oh my God. There's a power struggle here. There does seem to be a warring and, and a conflict in some capacity. Um, and with Saturn, it, it, it's such a, it's, it's complicated because there is in some ways a need to hold back. Sorry, I'm going to rephrase that. A need to better think out how you address this. It's like we have to have a game plan about how we address this before we just let her rip and say things we might regret later. <clears throat> but ultimately, you have no reason to hold back the truth. It's just it almost with Mercury retrograde, we have to maybe edit what we say first. We have to maybe write it down to process what we're, for cancers, process what we're feeling before we actually move forward with, with that offer. And for some of you, that's actually what's going on behind the ethers in regards to someone else in your life. If that message doesn't make sense to you, that might be a communication coming in. Um, all right. Anything else I need to tell my cancers? We'll keep we'll keep those two. That feels important. <clears throat> Anything else for cancer? 
<clears throat> tell me, tell me about this connection. I mean, I, I like, I want to get excited for you, but I, I also feel like I need to tell you think outside the box because there's something very unexpected and unpredictable about what this is. And keep in mind, we're going to be feeling this conjunction like for 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 weeks, right? For months. It's not like it has to happen on this day or we lose. Like you know, we didn't get the reward, we didn't get the blessing, we didn't get the the fun energy. Um, it's complicated. I mean, Uranus is isn't always like actually rarely is totally fun. But again, it's being combined with Jupiter where something good and beautiful comes out of this. But there is a wake up call. It's like the Pluto Uranus stuff. You can't fight it. You can't you can't deny its existence because it's it changes you. It changes you as a person, right? And so welcome that change, but know that it, it's not a punishment. It's not a death sentence. It's to get you to see something that you weren't able to see before because you were stuck up in the tower with no windows. The Empress, yeah, it has to do with self-respect, has to do with self-worth. It's funny, I don't want to dive too much into this, but you, there is something with pregnancy, the opportunity coming through for, for cancers. Um, Especially in, in the coming weeks, we got the full moon in Scorpio, again, squaring Pluto, impacting your long-term plans, right? So that might be sort of embarking on some, some journey with children. That's not for everyone. Others of you, if it's not literal children in your belly, right? Like growing, you know, pregnancy. That was a weird way of phrasing it. It's also that fifth house of like the things that we nurture in life that we want to grow, but it's specifically creative endeavors too, and possibly some sort of really beautiful collaboration. It's also happening in your house of dating. So it could just be sort of planting the seeds of a long-term partnership, but it's it's still showing up in the dark a little bit. I don't think we have a full pulse on it. Um, <clears throat> You think you needed something that you didn't need all along and it was hard and it was something that you still have this, I wish things had been different, but you didn't need it. And, and coming to the realizations that you still got there anyway on your own or with a different energy, with a different person, with the situation, you have reason to be proud. You, again, this is very much speaking of like wounded warrior, something that you felt like held you back or, or was some sort of handicap or something you didn't have that everybody else did. You're still going to get the results you want. And, and again, with Saturn, it's like, Rather than leaning into the fear or the negative of why me, like, why did it have to be this way? This is just like, I still got what I needed because I am self-reliant. Like, I, like, this is badass energy. Badass energy. All right. Expect good things coming in. Um, Cancer, that's what I got for you. Thanks for joining me this week, guys. I appreciate you. Let me know in the comments below what you think of mixing the tarot and the astrology. I've been doing that a little bit, right? But I'm, I think I'm wanting to start to do more of it. Let me know. I offer construct, or I would appreciate constructive criticism, not just I, I hate it. Um, but you know, you do you, Cancer. Um, like, share, subscribe, and I will see you soon for more tarot. Bye, guys.